Okay, today we're going to try to see if is our correlation significant. So remember we had this correlation from the other day that we did number of cases versus positivity. We have an R squared. We know it's not going to be significant. It's a bad R squared. But let's see if we can actually get a P value for that. And getting a P value in Excel is a pain in the butt. Right? So the, there's two ways you do it. Either you use an outside website or you use the regression tool pack. So what the first thing is for the outside um, website, you need to know the correlation coefficient and the count. So if you want to do the correlation, this is really R, not R squared. And that's to, that's for that will give you correlation. So I'm going to write correlation. So if we did that, we're going to do equals C O R R E L. And then you add your two arrays. Number of cases was our X. And positivity was our Y. So if we do this, that tells you how well they're correlated. That's the R. If you wanted the R squared, you literally just take this and square it, right? And now that matches our R squared on the graph. And you can also do in the reverse. So say you could calculate RS, the R squared. So you do equals RSQ. We did this the other day. You do known Y's, comma, known X's, right? And you get that same R squared that's on the graph. And you want, if you want the R, oh, if you want the R, you would just do the square root of that. But you don't know if it's plus or minus, right? Because square root can be plus or minus. And see, it matches above. See, this is how you can get your R's and your R squareds. But now we want to know how many of them there are. I always use count because I always, I, I, it makes my life simpler. So you do count, count, count. So we know our count and our R. Then to do this, I always just go back and I just Google um, P value from R. And then you get this quick P value calculator. It comes up, right? And it asks you for your R score and your N. So we can go back to Excel. And you get our R, copy that, put our R score, and then our N was 11. Put that in, you hit calculate. Right now, if we look at this, it says the p-value is 0.9255, oh, that's really high. So it's not significant. So that did not work. So, right, so that did not work at all. So it's not, the p-value does not work, it's too high, right, we're in bad shape. I'm going to do, right, so, that's, so we know that's not working. So, right, we know it's not significant. So now the next thing you can also do, the other way you can do it in Excel, is you can do the regression tool pack. So if you go to data, there's analysis tools, we can go to data analysis. Then in data analysis, there's regression. And if you hit OK, it's going to want your Y's, so that's going to be positivity. And it's going to want to know your X's, number of cases. So we have that. And then we're going to put this, we don't have labels. We're going to put this in a new worksheet fly. Uh, we don't need graphs for this. And you hit OK. And it makes this new sheet, right? And in this new sheet, it tells you the values. It gives you the R squared, right? Then because it, it adjusts it, so you can ignore it. So usually I look at the R squared, it matches. Then the two P values are this significance F here which is the same to the p variable on the slope, right? So these two are saying the p value on the slope is 0.92. So it's way off. Because remember, for significance, you want it to be less than 0.05. So it only has a 5% chance or 0.01. So this one was not significant at all, and we showed it two ways. But let's go back to our time series. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Let's go back to our, sorry, our correlations. What happens, what happens if we got rid of some of these outliers, right? Let's say I'm going to delete these last three values. Wow, and that's a much nicer correlation. Now you can ask yourself, is this significant? It might be significant. Look, right, because it looks pretty good. So let's try it again. So I'm going to do our data analysis, regression, 
It already keeps the Y's, but we can go grab our Y's. Then we can grab our X's. So we have them. There's going to be a new worksheet fly. This is where it gets messy in Excel. I don't like it. Because see, now all of a sudden we're in, we're in sheet two. So we should have labeled these. So let's go back and label before we do anything. So sheet one, this is all data, right? And this is up to, I think, December 20th, if I have it correctly. So if we do, yep, we have up to December 20th. And now you can see, if you look at our significance now, it's 0.047. So that means it's less than 0.05. So this means, so what this means is it has less than a 5% chance of happening randomly. So this data could happen randomly 5% of the time, but that means most of the time it's probably correlated. So it probably, it probably happened like this. So we could say it's significant at the P less than 0.05 level. So if you went back to here, you could say something like, you could put P value, right? We could copy it back in, right? We could just copy the P value, put it in here, and then you could say significant at P less than 0 0.05, right? So as you can see, this is, doesn't, Excel does not do this very well, but it's good to know how to do it when you're testing for significance. So either you do the data analysis tool pack or you go and do it in an outside website. Good luck.